So what is the last report in this workshop? Let's talk something about something like. And my topic today is the physics of real adverse machine learning in optical systems, which is bright in the light. And in this talk, I will present an experimental study in the interactive optical neural networks. So nowadays, the deep learning system has been well explored, and the accelerators for the deep learning system has been well designed for the systems in different application scenarios. For example, for the data center systems, the accelerator is designed to have the high um, system throughputs, but however, uh, but at the same time, it will have very high energy cost. And on the other side, the uh, low cost uh, accelerators like FPGAs and ASICs are also designed for the customized deep learning systems. However, at the same time, this kind of the accelerators is limited in its functionality and has very limited system throughputs. So, you can see there's a clear trade off between the system power conception and the system throughputs. So, to overcome such a bottleneck, people start to turn their eyes to the optical systems where the electrical signal in the conventional digital neural networks will be replaced by the light signals. So the optical accelerator is expected to produce the high system throughputs but at a very low power consumption. So diffractive optical neural networks is a promising area in the optical systems. It has many advantages over the conventional digital neural networks, like it has high system throughputs and a high computation speed, but at a very low power consumption. More importantly, the DLNN system is a simple system by skipping the sensors and the analog to digital converters integrated in this system, and instead, the DLN system will realize the computation directly with the light signal by taking advantage of the light. So the DLN system is expected to be applied into many practical applications, especially the security sensitive applications like airport security scanning, medical image services, which is also mentioned in the Professor Young's talk, and uh, so on. So, we can also see that the DLN system can have the potential to be employed in the all optical autonomous driving. So these applications usually pose great importance on the integrity of its input data and as well as the robustness of its predictive model, which shows the great importance of our adversarial study in the optical systems. So the, for the first First of all, we want to ask, what is the adverse function learning? And in this work, we focus on the innovation attack, where the attacks will happen at the inference phase with the learned predictive model. For example, the original data can be classified correctly by the predictive model. However, with the adversary attacks applied to the original data, the adversarial sample will confuse this predictive model and force it to produce the wrong prediction result. So there have been many existing adversarial algorithms designed for the conventional digital neural networks, and they mainly fall into two categories, which is a, back, a black box attack and the white box attack. In our work here, we focus on the white box attack where the adversary algorithms will have no full knowledge about the predictive model, including the training data and the learning algorithms. So let, let me give you some more detailed knowledge about the DLN system. As you can see from this illustration figure, the DLN first, the DLN system is composed of the input plane, diffractive layers, and the detector plane. And each layer will be separated by the diffraction distance C to provide the free space light diffraction. And second, the DLN system will encode the information on the light signal, uh, where the sig light signal is usually described in complex domain in physics. So to be consistent with this, the physical uh, description of the light signal and to get a more accurate emulation in, of the DLN system, 
The whole human system is also described in complex domain. And the third, as you can see from this enlarged detailed illustration figure, the human system realized the, um, uh, realized the machine learning task by taking advantage of the light diffraction and the phase modulation of the input light signal. So first of all, we want to encode the information on the light signal. So the original input is usually the digital real number described information, which is ex extracted from the conventional digital database, like the minister data set. And to make it compatible with the optical system, it is first required to be converted into the complex domain. And in this complex input, the real part of this complex number is the real number, is the digital real number described uh, information from the original input data. And the, the imaginary part of this complex input is set to be zero, which means the face information of the input light signal is initialized to be zero, and uh, the input information is encoded on the intensity of the light signal. So next step, the phase space diffraction over the diffraction distance d will be applied to the input light signal. And uh, to emulate the analog fitting phenomenon, which is the light diffraction here, on the digital computation platforms, we need the mathematical approximation for the light diffraction. For example, here we use the Fresnel approximation, which is expressed as the function h with respect to the uh, location of the input signal and the diffraction distance v. So given the input wave function, the wave function after free space diffraction can be expressed as the um, equation here, which involves the calculation of the 2D FFT, um, the complex domain matrix multiplication, and also the inverse 2D FFT. So next step, the light, in, uh, light signal after free space diffraction will be phase modulated at the diffractive layer and uh, the phase modulator embedded at each diffraction unit in the diffractive layer is our trainable parameters for the whole system. And uh, the phase modulation can be applied to the, uh, the lighting signal by the complex domain matrix multiplication as shown here. And uh, we also wrap the calculation of light diffraction and phase modulation in the function module, which is named the diff mode, with respect to the inputs of the system and uh, the phase modulation parameters, which is theta here. So for the multiple diffractive layer constructed DLM system, uh, its forward function have can be calculated iteratively for all stacked diffractive layers. For example, in this three diffractive layer uh, DLLN system, the forward function can be expressed as this i with respect to its inputs, which is x c here in complex domain, and the phase modulation parameters of the whole DLLN system. Yeah, for the training of the DLLN system, we will need the information of the light diffraction pattern captured at the detector plane. So we, on the detector plane, we have predefined detector regions for the corresponding labels. And uh, by comparing the light intensity at the detector region, we can uh, pick the label with the highest light intensity as our, as our prediction result. So together with the ground choose label D, we can have the loss function of the DLN system as described here. So as you can see from the full description of this DLN system, it is designed to be fully differentiable, which means it can be integrated with the auto diff engines, where the phase modulation, which is the trainable parameters in the system, can be optimized by the conventional SGD algorithms. 
Here is the inference example of the UN system. Each step bit here is a corresponding light diffraction pattern at the diffractive layer and uh, also the diffraction pattern at the detector clamp. So the trained DLN system can be then physically deployed on the optical devices, which we will give you more details in our next section. So for the adverse growth starters in the DLN system, we are wondering what's the difference between the adverse growth starter in the DLN system and that in the conventional neural network? So as we have discussed before, the DLN system is all described with complex numbers. So for the adversary study, including the attack space and the adversary attack itself, is also described in complex numbers in the DLN system. And uh, also limited by the physics uh, deployment of the DLN system at the present stage, the input data and the perturbation data of the DLN system is described with gray values. These are some adversary samples in both conventional neural network and the DLN system. So next, I want to talk about our work in the complex value adversary algorithms, especially for the DLN system. For the very first step, we want to extend the fast gradient sign methods, which is FGSM, into the complex domain to make it work in the DLN system. So from this fully differentiable, uh, from the inference of this fully differentiable DLN system, we can acquire the complex value gradients from the inference with the loss function of the system to its inputs, which is image x here. So um, for, this for this acquired complex domain gradients, which is complex FGSM here, we can define the attack into three attack methods. The first one is the real attack, where only the real part of the perturbation data will be applied to the real part of the input data. And the imaginary part is remained the same as the original data. The second one is the imaginary data, uh, where the only the imaginary part of the perturbation data will be applied to the imaginary part of the input data, and uh, the real, real part of the input data will remain the same. And uh, of course, the last one is the complex domain attack. So in our work of the physics aware complex FGSM, we generate binary attack in the complex domain with our proposed adversary attack algorithm. And uh, we apply the real attack to the input's background, where the feature part of the in input data is excluded from the attack for the recognition. Here's some evaluation examples with the complex FGSM in the DLN system. The first column is the original data, and the second column is the adversary sample after applying the adversary attacks to the original data. And the, the next three columns are the internal light diffraction pattern in the DLN system. The last one is the diffraction pattern captured at the detector plane, which is used for the prediction uh, result. So as you can see here, with the adverse rule sample, the DLN system is fully confused and uh, it will produce the wrong um, prediction result. For example, in the first row, the digital one is misclassified as digital seven, and the digital two here is misclassified as the digital seven. And for the last one, which is the sneaker in the fashion, uh, fashion minister data set, is misclassified as a pullover by the DLN system with that adverse row sample. So compared with the uh, diffraction pattern at the detector plane with the original input data, we can see there is a clear shift for the light intensity from the original correct level to the wrong prediction level, which shows the effectiveness of our proposed adverse row attacks in the evaluation aspects. 
So to be more comprehensive, we also provided some comparison about the adversary attacks with the neural system and the conventional digital neural networks like the multi-layer perceptions and the convolutional neural networks. We can see both similarity and the difference between the DLN system and the conventional neural architectures. So uh, specifically, we can see that the adversary attack patterns for the DLN system is more grouped. So this kind of the difference can be explained by the uh, function uh, by the different function mechanisms behind the conventional neural networks and the DLN system. So the DLN system function based on the um, physical phenomena like light diffraction and the light phase modulation, uh, which will also be formulated and uh, constrained by some physics theories. However, for the conventional digital neural networks, they don't have such physics limitations. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. So next, we want to validate our work on the physical experimental setups. As you can see from this photo, the experimental setups includes the input image, three diffractive layers, and the camera. So first, the input image is encoded with a laser beam with a wavelength of 532 nanometers, and the diffraction distance is set to be 11 inches. The spatial light modulators are employed as the diffractive layers in our experimental setups, and the half wave plate and the polarizer are required for the base mode for the SLMs, which means in this experimental setup, the SLM only provides the phase modulation. And finally, the CMOS cam camera is employed at the end of the system to capture the light diffraction for the prediction outputs. So first, we want to validate the predictive model with the original input data on our experimental setups. As we we can see in this example, we provided the light intensity distribution on the detect plane in both sim uh, simulation result and the experimental measurements. And the probability fit here is the light intensity distribution ratio on each candidate label. It is also can be re uh, regarded as the classification confidence. So in the simulation result of this original input, which is the digital one here, the classification confidence is 0 0.85, and in the experimental measurements, the confidence is 0 0.81, which shows nice correlation between our numerical modeling and the physical experimental setups. We further um, validate such a correlation uh, with more input original data, and the results is shown in this two conclusion matrix. So the validation of the predictive model on the experimental setups is the essential step to guarantee the integrity of the gradients extracted from our numerical modeling. Only the gradients is valid on the experimental setups. The uh, the adversary attacks like FGSM based on these gradients can be meaningful to be deployed on the experimental setups. So next, with a valid predictive model, we can validate our adversary attacks on the physical experimental setups. So these confusion metrics are the simulation results, uh, which shows the effectiveness of the adversary attacks from the illumination aspect. As you can see, there's a clear um, accuracy degradation after applying the adversary attacks. So we further uh, provided the detailed analysis of both input, uh, original input data and the adversary samples in both simulation results and the experimental results. So from this, um, probability analyze fee, we can see the light intensity is redistributed after applying the adversary attacks. Specifically, you can see the 
light intensity decreases at the original correct level while you increase at the wrong prediction level, which shows the success of our adversary attacks with the adversary algorithms in both simulation and experimental setups. In, additionally, we can see the binarization of the input images can dissolve the object features and the overall light intensity is weak with the adversary input images. So finally, let me conclude my work in uh, physics where uh, adversary analysis in the DLMS system. First, we implement the complex domain FGSM attack in the optical domain and uh, we demonstrated the C complex, uh, the complex FGSM in optical machine learning systems like DLMS system. And we also provide a comprehensive adversary comparison between the DLM system and the conventional digital neural networks. Finally, we verify the algorithm on the physical deployed experiments, which is also the most exciting part of our work. And uh, we, can, we see our work to be a motivation for the adversary studies in complex neural network systems like neural net system and also other physics-based neural networks. And in the future, we expect more adversary algorithms and the corresponding different uh, defense algorithm and to be and valid them on the physical hardware in the DLMS system. And that's it. Thank you guys for listening. And you are very welcome to check our work with this preprint paper uh, with this archive link. Thank you. I'm happy to take questions.